Hello and welcome to our Africa Cup of Nations show on France 24. It's been another dramatic night of football as Senegal, Cameroon, Angola, Burkina Faso and Mauritania become the latest teams to book their spots in the last 16. While 2019 champions Algeria crash out of the group stages, we'll be going through all the action here in the studio with the Eurosport journalist Ruben Slutter and uh, James Vecina in Ivory Coast. And that's where we can be crossing uh, to uh, right. And now with that big uh, shock this evening, Algeria heading home after losing against Mauritania 1-0. Uh, with that result, Mauritania finish uh, in third in Group D and qualify with a best uh, place, uh, third placed uh, spot. But let's uh, start with Algeria. James, what a disaster for the 2019 are champions. An absolute disaster. There's a party going on behind me in the stadium here in Boaké, and I can tell you the Algerians are not part of it. Mauritania, though, are absolutely over the moon. Their supporters running onto the pitch, uh, some of them, uh, as that final whistle was finally blown. For Algeria, it's a catastrophe on their side. Nothing once again uh, to be seen in their game. Unable to keep the ball, giving the ball away way too much and not producing anything again once more in goal. There was already a lot of criticism uh, about their forwards, about uh, Riyad Mahrez, who was kept on the bench in the first half. He came on uh, in the second. Jamal Belmadi deciding to make that change uh, once they were uh, one under. Uh, in the end, that did not bring anything. The crossbar was hit a couple of times of, from either side, but in the end, it is that one goal from Mauritania uh, that stands. Look at it this way. Algeria, defend, uh, former champions in 2019, they have not won a game since lifting that trophy. That's how bad the situation is. That's how bad things are for Algeria and the despair for all fans right now. Algeria, the first big favourite to exit this tournament uh, tonight. Uh, the question, of course, is going to be, is this finally time for Jamal Belmadi to leave the team? He's got so much support back home from all he's brought to them from that win back in 2019. That support dwindled uh, after that, and now it's going to be tough to see. We're going to see how he speaks over the next few hours and uh, over the days uh, about his team's performance at this uh, Ivory Coast uh, AFCON. Uh, but once again, it's another surprise from a much smaller team. Mauritania get their first ever win at the tournament. So put it this way, uh, it's been a, a side of two things going completely uh, the other way, one for the other uh, tonight. And Mauritania played as they should have. They played really pretty strongly, actually. Um, their goalkeeper keeping them out a lot of trouble. Some fantastic saves uh, from the man from Gangon, who plays over in France. Uh, and he really saved them really nicely tonight. But Algeria, in the end, were not in that. They were, you could see the frustration boiling over. There was far too much talking, far too much talking to the referee, too much trying to get the get VAR uh, in place too many times uh, from all across the team. Um, and they were losing this patience. They can feel it. I'm pretty sure that the, the players will feel at that moment exactly what was, will be going on at home. And that is the frustration from the fans. And this has to stop for them. It's gone too far. Uh, two Afghans this way, winless uh, since 2019. And they crash out once again. You uh, couldn't uh, write the script uh, in this AFCON, even if you tried. Uh, James was seen for us there. We'll be crossing uh, back to him later on. Let's uh, cross over to Ruben in the studio. James mentions it uh, there. Uh, Belmadi obviously won for Algeria, the AFCON, uh, their, uh, AFCON in 2019. Uh, but could it be time for him to step down after two disappointing campaigns now? Well, if we know him a little bit, I think that he will be the one who will make the decision. And I probably think that he will go because... Yeah, it's now three times in a row because we also shouldn't forget that they didn't go to the World Cup in Qatar while they were losing at home against Cameroon in that famous match that they, well, they were really angry with the referee, but also where they won first in Cameroon and then lost at home. It's now three disasters in a row. And this is, yeah, James said it well, this is a true disaster. I mean, this is incredible. I was, I'm lost for words. Every day we think it won't get any crazier in this tournament. And now again, it's Mauritania. It was not even their first win. It was their first lead ever in the AFCON. And also, James said it right. They, they fully deserve the win, in my opinion. They played very well. They played exactly to their strengths in the counter-attack, where Algeria was very vulnerable. They could have scored more goals, two or three easily today. Didn't do that, but they defended pretty well. A great goalkeeper. So, yeah, full credit to them, but for Algeria, for the big footballing nation that it is, it's a, it's, it's a complete disaster. 
And I'm sure one that will uh, be felt uh, back in Algeria. But what an exploit uh, for Mauritania, not just causing an upset, but booking their spot in the last 16. Uh, let's uh, move on to the other uh, game in uh, that group because Angola has been another big surprise uh, in this tournament. So they top a uh, Group D. They beat uh, Burkina Faso 2-0 uh, uh, tonight in their game. And let's let take a look at where all those results have left the standings in Group D. Uh, D Angola at uh, top the group with seven points. Burkina Faso a uh, go through to last 16 with four points, and Mauritania uh, joined them as one of the best of uh, third place uh, teams. In Algeria, of course, are uh, finishing a uh, bottom of uh, that group. Uh, Ruben, we're seeing a lot of small teams: Cape Verde, Equatorial Guinea, and Angola all topping their groups. This was not expected at all, and some of the bigger teams uh, struggling. This has been a tournament of the underdogs so far. Yeah, it's incredible. If you would have put a bit of money on those three teams winning their group, yeah, I mean, you're you're a millionaire right now, let's be honest. So Angola also, it's not that there, there, there's a real project in the country, also real investment into their in, in, into the football in, in Angola. So it's not a complete surprise, but it's a surprise, of course, that they finish in a group with Angola and Burkina, uh, with, uh, I'm sorry, with uh, Algeria and Burkina Faso, of course. So full credits to them also today a decent performance you you saw with the two teams that there was not the whole holy fire having to to win it but angola mm. wanted it more and yeah they're now topping their group so they have normally an easier match uh, in the next round so yeah why not go any further i think that now any team will think that it's their their game because yeah they, we have now so many surprises yeah literally everything can happen Anything can happen. We have seen that uh, time and time again uh, so far at this AFCON. Uh, let's move on to what was another absolute uh, thriller between the Gambia and Cameroon in Group C. With 85 minutes left on the clock, the Imidomital lines were heading out before a dramatic turn of events which saw them snatch a 3-2 win with two uh, late goals. The Gambia thought they had pulled one back at the very last moment, but that uh, uh, was ruled out VAR intervening there. That result immediately Cameroon finished second in Group C on goal difference. For more, let's uh, cross back to James in the Ivory Coast, who was also uh, watching that match. Uh, James, another roller coaster of a game after yesterday evening's drama and more <laughs> drama this evening. Uh, the Gambia had. Uh, uh, sorry, that, that's uh, the end of my question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's hard it's hard to keep up with it. I wouldn't blame you, uh, Selena, and keep up with even what things were going on uh, in the stadium here. Uh, there was almost another huge upset, uh, and in the end, though, it is Cameroon who make it through. They were worried at one point, um, and again, it was a matter of another team, a smaller team, the Gambia, who made a huge impression in their first tournament. That was last time round, reaching the quarterfinals. This time, they didn't do quite so well, but this was the game where they truly, truly woke up. They fought for it at one point. They were actually leading and they could have caused that massive upset uh, once again. Uh, but in the end, uh, it was uh, for Cameroon to be able to take uh, that win in the last few minutes. So much drama. One goal, one end, one the other. Then another that was cancelled out. Uh, too much, too much uh, just to mention in that. But I can tell you within the stadium, uh, the whole crowd was for the smaller team once again for the Gambia backing them. Uh, and it was just magnificent to, to just really to feel uh, and just to watch. And in those moments where they were actually leading, the crowd went absolutely wild. It didn't last for very long, but this is how it felt uh, for the team. And uh, well, let's uh, uh, give a quick mention to the Gambia because they had that absolute fairy tale of a run uh, to the quarterfinals in their maiden AFCON two years ago. And they've fallen short, uh, James, at uh, this time. But it was already quite a feat for them to even qualify for a second edition running. All of this coming under the tenure of Thomas Seinfeld. Exactly. I think it's just the uh, good moments where we can just take a listen to what he had to say uh, just a little bit earlier after the game. I, I'm, I'm so long coach. This was my hundredth, my hundredth FIFA game as national team coach, and it's never over till it's over. You play Cameroon, and I was a little bit afraid because some players were celebrating already before it was over, and so it was only a very short minute of yes, we are almost there. So it was very disappointing to see two goals afterwards. And that's what happened in the end. It was their team who celebrated just too much at that point. This, these are the words from uh, the manager uh, there. And that's what really 
let them down in the end because they lost that concentration. They really needed to hold on to the end. Uh, you can imagine there was part of the team that had gone too much with the supporters uh, and who were spending too long while, they, while their, uh, their other uh, players were waiting actually on the pitch. And that was what uh, ended up ended things for the Gambia uh, tonight. The Gambia coach there, Thomas, uh, Tom St. Feet, uh, who actually is now stepping down. He announced that just after the game, uh, despite a great performance uh, tonight. He said that it was time for him to leave things as they stand in. Let's be uh, relative in a good situation. Last time was absolutely brilliant. This time, the first two games weren't so good, but he has truly transformed the Gambia, and you can be sure that fans will be extremely happy with the legacy that he leaves uh, for the players and for the team within uh, AFCON. James Asina in the Ivory Coast there. Thank you uh, very much for joining us uh, this evening. And, well, a dramatic evening for Cameroon as they turn the tables around in a matter of minutes. A goalkeeper, Fabrice Ondoa, has said uh, he never lost hope during that game. Let's take a listen to him. A feeling of happiness, of pride, and self-esteem. When they scored those goals, I saw how my teammates wanted to give up. So I told my captain, Zambo Anguissa, that we shouldn't give that impression, that we had to stand up, and that if we scored in the next few minutes, we could then have the opportunity to score the third goal. And that's what happened. There were some players who wanted to give up, but that shouldn't be our style. We've got to stay on our feet and believe in ourselves. So, Ruben, before kickoff, there was a lot of talk, of course, because Manchester United goalkeeper Andre Onana uh, was dropped for the game. It's no secret that there's bad blood, of course, between uh, him and the coach, uh, Song. Uh, Onana did have a shaky performance against Senegal. Uh, Son has opted for... Fabrice uh, Ondua, who is actually uh, Onana's cousin. Cameroon have conceded six goals in this tournament. Is, is this their weakness, the back line? Well, there are many weaknesses in their game. <laughs> I, I, have to be, I have to be honest. It, it was already a miracle that they pulled it off today because uh, he is saying that they kept belief, but it was also, it was just at some point, it was complete despair and they were just trying. But it was, it, it would have also been quite normal if, if the Gambia would have won this game. So, yeah, in defense, they are they're not that strong, but also up front, I think there's still a lot to win for them. Uh, next round, they will get, play against Nigeria. Yeah. Nigeria, one of the best defences in this tournament so far. So, yeah, it will be really interesting if they can stand the test, especially playing against Victor Osimhen, of course. And then there's all the internal questions with Onana. Will he play? Won't he play? But, yeah, that's up to the Cameroon uh, team and to, uh, to Rigouet Song to, to sort it out. I hope, uh, I hope they will find a solution. Well, uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, for uh, that one. Uh, Cameroon, uh, who will be facing uh, Nigeria on Saturday in the last 16. Uh, quite an interesting uh, encounter between two uh, African powerhouses who are, are perhaps potentially not at their best uh, so far uh, at uh, this AFCON. Uh, let's uh, move on to uh, the last uh, game uh, of uh, this uh, the last game to cover if this evening, Group C's other game, which was less of a nail-biter, defending champions. Uh, Senegal completed a perfect uh, group stage campaign for them with three wins out of three as they beat Guinea uh, 2-0. A uh, sec headed in the opening goal from a free kick uh, just after the hour, ma hour mark before NDI sealed the win uh, just before the final Whistle Senegal advancing to the knockout uh, stages, top of their group uh, with nine points, uh, followed by uh, Cameroon. Guinea, who already knew they were through before kickoff, finish as one of the best third place teams. Uh, Ruben, it wasn't their most convincing performance this evening for Senegal, but they did what they needed to do and they still got two goals. They're the only side with 100% record in this competition. They're still the ones to beat. For me, it's really convincing, to be fair. I mean, Guinea is, is a tough side to beat. It's a neighboring uh, country. There was nothing at stake. Okay, winning your group, but there was more pride at stake. They didn't play with all their first 11 players, but they were still quite dominant. It was... Uh, it was... If, if I mean, we have seen so many surprises. There's only one team that remains... Uh, stable all the time and that's Senegal for now uh, so yeah they they are the huge favorites maybe Morocco as well we'll see tomorrow if they will recover from that little sidestep against uh, against the DR Congo but yeah Senegal is until now has been the most convincing team and also in the de depth of the players there's so many players also on the bench who can come on score a goal so yeah this is for them they they are they will consider themselves a huge favorites the interesting thing right now is that 
probably, or well, we'll see tomorrow, but there's a huge chance they will be playing against the Ivory Coast in the second round, and that will be a blockbuster. You think it will be a blockbuster? <laughs> of course. I mean, host, host country against, against the top favorites, that's what you want to see, right? So if that will turn out, of course, Senegal will be favorites. But yeah, it's, it's just... I, I, I'm not going to say anything anymore about favorites because we've said it time and time again about all those big countries. And Ghana is gone. Algeria is gone. Uh, Ivory Coast, we don't know yet. Yeah, that's... It's every, every match seems to give us another surprise. So yeah, bring on tomorrow, please. We'll have to wait and see, but it would be a, a big ask for Ivory Coast if they do get through to overcome that obviously humiliating 4-0 win and pull out a, an, up, shall we say, an upset against uh, Senegal. But uh, anything can happen this competition. Yeah, we've seen so I, please, come on, give us, give us, those, <laughs> give us those games. I'm, uh, first, first, let's give us tomorrow because, yeah, we will again have, have some incredible matchups. I, I'm thinking about South Africa against, against Tunisia, also two teams that are that are in a need for for results uh, we have namibia still coming back uh, who can still qualify against mali so yeah that will be uh, two great matchups and in the other group of course we will it will be interesting to see how, how morocco will react and also uh, there's a there's a zambia uh, zambia against morocco sorry and the dr congo against against tanzania who also uh, still have to but still want to qualify, yeah. So there's a lot of stake for all those teams, and I think that if all those smaller teams, if I may say so, are looking tonight at the, at Mauritania, they will all say, okay, if they can do it, why not we? Anyone can. That's uh, something uh, for sure. Uh, at this Avcon, no, that's all we have uh, time for this evening. Thank you to Ruben in the studio with me here and uh, James uh, in uh, Ivory Coast. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow for uh, the conclusion of uh, all of the group uh, stage uh, games. And we'll know uh, the 16 teams that will be going through uh, to the knockouts. Tune in again at the same time at 10 past 11 Paris time for all the latest from the Africa Cup of Nations. Goodbye. Off the coast of Norway lies a source of great envy. Rare deep sea minerals. Synthetic biology, 6G, uh, artificial intelligence have that in common, that they are enabled by minerals. But the exploitation of this underwater El Dorado could pose an environmental threat. Here you can see the dust from the operation spreading into the water. Any impact would be long lasting. A crucial choice for the future. The need for minerals going forward in the energy transition that we're going through is so great. So saying no also has consequences. Watch Norway, the race for deep sea mining in Reporters on France 24 and France24.com. They're known for their cuisine and saying hello with a kiss. They only work 35 hours per week, when they're not on strike, that is. How true are these clichés about France? Every week, Florence Villeminot tears apart stereotypes. Join us for insight into French culture and current events to understand what makes the French so unique. French Connections. Presented by Florence Villemino on France 24 and France24.com. to the rhythms of Africa. The Africa Cup of Nations from January the 13th to February the 11th on France 24.